Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, our readings today teach us about the certainty of faith. May we choose to live our lives not in the uncertainty of fear, but in the certainty of faith. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. 
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw an angel come down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the abyss and a heavy chain. He sees the dragon, the ancient serpent, which is the devil or Satan, and tied it up for a thousand years and threw it into the abyss, which he locked over it and sealed, so that it could no longer lead the nations astray until the thousand years are completed. After this, it is to be released for a short time. Then I saw thrones. Those who sat on them were entrusted with judgment. I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, and who had not worshipped the beast or its image, nor had accepted its mark on their foreheads or hands. They came to life and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Next, I saw a large white throne and the one who was sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence and there was no place for them. I saw the dead, the great and the lowly standing before the throne and scrolls were opened. Then another scroll was opened, the Book of Life. The dead were judged according to their deeds by what was written in the scrolls. The sea gave up its dead, then death and Hades gave up their dead. All the dead were judged according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the pool of fire. This pool of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the pool of fire. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here God lives among his people. Here God lives among his people. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Here God lives among his people. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Here God lives among his people. Blessed they who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. Blessed the man whose strength you are, they go from strength to strength. Here God lives among his people. Please stand. Stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Consider the fig tree and all the other trees. When their buds burst open, you see for yourselves and know that summer is now near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, we have been following the gospel passages about Jesus talking of the end of times. Napansin po ninyo siguro nitong mga nakaraang araw, ang Ebanghelyo ay tungkol sa pagtuturo ni Jesus sa katapusan ng mundo. But Jesus today teaches a parable on how we should see, how we should look at the end of times. Jesus in the parable today reminds us that we must not be ruled by fear. We must not look at the end of times with fear, but we must look at it with faith. Because fear is uncertain. Faith is more certain than fear. That is why the, in the parable, Jesus tells his disciples, when you see the fig tree blossom and the buds burst open, you know that summer is coming. That is how certain faith is. When you see all of these coming, he said, the kingdom of God is near. Kaya nga, ang paalala ni Jesus sa atin ngayon, Wag tingnan ang buhay ng, sa pamamagitan ng takot. Tignan ang buhay sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya. Because fear is uncertain. Kaya nga takot. Kasi hindi mo alam ang mangyayari. Kaya may takot. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, wag ka dapat pangunahan ng takot. Pangunahan mo ng may pananampalataya. Kasi ang takot, hindi kasigurado. Pero ang pananampalataya, yan ang sigurado. Faith is always more certain than fear. That is why Jesus reminds His disciples in the Gospel, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Let us look at life not with the uncertainty of fear, but let us look at life with the certainty of faith. In our first reading from the book of Revelation, we have also been listening to the book of Revelation in the past two weeks. God gave John a vision of many things, sometimes even fearful things, fearful visions. 
But let us be reminded that the book of Revelation is not a vision of fear, but a vision of faith. Tandaan po natin na ang aklat ng pahayag ay hindi pananakot ng Diyos, kundi ito ay nagpapaalala sa atin ng pananalig sa Kanya. So my dear brothers and sisters, today, let us have a vision not of fear, but a vision of faith. Wag pangunahan ng takot. Pangunahan mo lagi ng may pananalig. Kasi ang takot hindi sigurado, pero ang pananalig at pananampalataya sa Diyos, sabi ni Jesus, ay laging sigurado at hindi lilipas ang kanyang pangako at salita. When you have to do things, do it not with fear, do it with faith. That is the certainty of faith. We have here some sisters, they come to Mass every day with us. These are missionary sisters. I hope, dear sisters, as you also do your mission, there will come a time that you will be afraid of mission, especially when you have a new mission. Kapag may bagong misyon, madalas natatakot. Ano kaya ang dala nito? Walang kasiguraduhan. But whenever we do your mission, especially when you have a new mission, do it not with fear. Do it with faith. Because fear is uncertain, but faith is always certain. Nawa sa misang ito, Pawiin ng Diyos ang mga takot ninyo sa puso. Nawa palitan ito ng Diyos ng pananalig. Nang sa gayon, sa lahat ng ating gagawin ay hindi tayo pangunahan ng takot, kundi pangunahan tayo ng pananalig at pananampalataya na sigurado. Amen. Please stand. The Lord Jesus has called us to watch for the day of His return. Let us come to the Father in prayer, watching and waiting for His return. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may respond to the call for conversion and renewal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people of goodwill may work together to put an end to war and hatred, oppression, and injustice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may increase our awareness of the presence of Christ among the poor and the suffering people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be given strength and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our friends and relatives who have died may experience everlasting joy in the company of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, listen to our prayers. Open our eyes to your presence all around us. Make us closer to you each day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
peace then. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicate to your name. And in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, grant us unfailing obedience to your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Tomorrow, Saturday, the image of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal from her shrine in St. Vincent de Paul Parish here in San Marcelino, Ermita, will visit the Manila Cathedral. The welcome mass tomorrow will be at 7.30 a.m. And after the mass, there will be an imposition of the Miraculous Medal to all the devotees who will be coming here and celebrating the Mass together with us. And so we invite everyone to join us tomorrow, Saturday, a day dedicated to Our Lady in anticipation of the Feast of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal to celebrate with us so that we may, have, uh, we may be imposed with the Miraculous Medal of Our Lady. The image of Our Lady will remain here until Monday and will conclude with the Solemn Vespers on Monday at 6 p.m. together with the Vincentian family. We thank the Vincentian Fathers for allowing us to host the image of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, especially as we also anticipate the Feast of the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. Next Tuesday, November 29, we will already be beginning the Novena Masses in honor of the Immaculate Conception. So please tune in on our social media pages. Please follow the Manila Cathedral social media pages because in the coming days, we will be announcing the schedule of the Novena Masses and we will also be posting a new copy of the new novena that we will be using for the feast day of the Immaculate Conception. When we post this novena, you can download it on your phones or your tablets and you can use them as we pray the novena to the Immaculate Conception starting this Tuesday, November 29. Let us all stand and receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.